One of my earliest childhood memories was when I was five years old. I lived in the country south of Hollis, Oklahoma. And one day, standing in the kitchen, my mother and I, I heard a bird whistling outside the kitchen window, and she said, that bird whistles its name, Bob White. And that whistle has been calling to me ever since then. That was my earliest recollection of a Bob White's whistle. Learning to imitate various bird calls is something I began to do when I was about 13 or 14 years old, and I've continued to work on that. So I do various different bird calls, like the mockingbird. And the quail is, a, is an interesting bird. It has about 13 different vocalizations or calls. I can't do all of those, but some of them are very, uh, very hushed. But the traditional Bob White whistle is either two-syllable or a three-syllable call. The three-syllable goes poor Bob White. <whistles> or sometimes you just hear the two-syllable call. <whistles> and when Bob White starts singing in late April, that's their way of basically proclaiming their territory, and they're trying to attract a mate. They're saying, hey, ladies, I'm over here. And so one bird, when it calls, will stimulate the next bird to call. It's called antiphonal calling. And again, you could hear several different birds whistling at a particular place. And so one of the ways that we use whistle calls in quail management is to gauge what our breeding uh, abundance is. We can go out sometime during the months of May or early June and listen for how many different roosters do we hear calling from a spot. We call this uh, the, the spring cock call index. And we do that from 25 different locations here at the research ranch from the months of mid-May until mid-August. And we would like to hear an average of at least four birds per stop, four roosters per stop. If you hear over eight roosters per stop, that's outstanding. If you hear less than two roosters per stop, you might ought to be concerned. So it just serves as an index to what our breeding capital is. Another call that we monitor, now we do this one during the fall, typically during October and November, is called the early morning covey call, sometimes called the coily call. And it sounds like this. And it's the call of a covey waking up. And they typically do this about 40 minutes before official sunrise. So that's just about the time you get a good pink glow in the eastern horizon, you'll begin to hear that. And we're trying to count how many different coveys do I hear calling. And by doing that, we can estimate how many coveys we hear within about a 600 yard radius or about 200 acres. And so we can get a crude index to Bob White density. So if we heard nine coveys calling, it'd equate to about 0.9 birds per acre. Anytime you can get close to one quail per acre, you're at a real good density for wild quail. When you've hunted quail, a common call that you'll hear is the assembly call. You've broke a covey up, they've dispersed, and typically anywhere from an hour to four or five hours later, they're gonna get back together. They're lonely and there's safety in numbers and they're nervous when they're out there by themselves. So sometimes you'll hear it. It's a series typically of about four short notes. And if you listen, hopefully you'll hear just a little bit of anxiety in that because again, they're nervous by being separated from the covey. It goes something like this. Go back to the mating call. The mating call is the Bob White. And if a hen hears that and the hen is in the mood for love, she'll respond with a call that sounds like the assembly call, but it's more plaintive. It's more uh, sexy. It goes like this. And that'll get all the roosters to sing him because they know there's an available lady in the neighborhoods. The next call you have to be really close to hear. It's, it, it's referred to in the literature as the tick tick call. I like to think of it as uh, the first lieutenant in the covey. And he's given the covey the marching orders as to what the game plan is going to be based on this threat. 
And a quail is a, a very social bird. I mean, that, that covey is uh, as a social unit. And so there's some leadership there, and there's somebody who's the boss, the first lieutenant. And when you walk up close to a covey of quail, if you're a quail hunter, you may have heard this sound. What that means depends on the threat. I tell people if they see a, a brace of good-looking pointer bird dogs coming up, that first lieutenant says, all right, boys, just about the time those two dogs go stiff and their old tails are sticking straight up and we see these two guys walking up with these sticks in their hand, we're going to flush left, go down behind the draw, fly about 100 yards, head up that little ravine, just running to beat the band. If they see a guy coming, for example, with a German short hair, the first lieutenant says, just sit tight, boys, they'll go right past us. That's a joke. Not mad at you German short hair folks. If they see my English setters coming, the first lieutenant becomes a priest and he's issuing the last rites. I participated for several years in quail calling contest and in 2001 was crowned the national champion. And in addition to the quail calls that you make, you're also required to make a hawk scream. And most people use various calls, little metal calls or whatever to do their quail calls and their hawk whistles, but I do mine a cappella. And so here's a red-tailed hawk. Here's a cooper's hawk. And a cooper's hawk to a quail is like Jason and Freddy Krueger all in one. It's, uh, it's the thing that nightmares are made of if you're a Bob White. And it goes more like this. And that'll really scare the bejabbers out of a quail. Another uh, sound that I sometimes make in, in contests is to simulate a flush. It goes like this. Birds kind of saying goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. I also imitate the calls of the blue quail or scale quail as it's technically referred to. Now the mating call of the scale quail is not very uh, glorious. It's, it's called a whack and it goes like this. But if we're in blue quail country doing whistle counts to estimate breeding abundance, that's the call we're listening for. But they don't call nearly as frequently as the Bob White. So if we heard an average, say, of three roosters calling, uh, we'd, be doing, we'd be in pretty good blue quail country. Uh, the other call, another call that blue quail make, and it's the one that's commonly associated with blue quail, is called the chip chur. And you can almost imagine it by tapping two rocks together. It goes like this. I often talk to people who've hunted blue quail all their life and they've never he heard blue quail make this sound. <laughs> yes, they can fly. I, I call all kinds of wildlife, coyotes and turkeys and everything, but one of the neatest responses that I can really impress people with is when I get quail to attack a vehicle. I'll be out with people who've hunted quail all their lives and said, have you ever been attacked by them? Oh no, I've never been attacked by them. And if we see a covey on the ground, within 20 or 30 yards away from us, I can do this sound and it'll make the quail come running with their wings fluttering like this. It's a chick in distress. Sounds like this. And that pair or sometimes a whole covey of birds, like I said, will come running, charging the vehicle. I've actually had them land up on the hood of a vehicle when doing that. So it's just an innate response. Uh, that uh, we're going to protect that chick, uh, something's getting it, we're going in, much like a killdeer would do with a broken wing act, they're going to go in and try to bluff away or lead away whatever threat is uh, focused on those chicks. I always encourage people to be a better student of quail, and you can't be a better student of quail sitting behind a desk at your office. You need to get out there on your lease or on your property. If you're doing that during May or early June, Try to get an inventory on how many quail you've got. So if you learn to recognize the different quail calls, you'll enjoy your, your outings much more and you'll be able to better understand what's going on in your quail world. So learn to uh, recognize and be able to appreciate what those different sounds mean.